Hey everyone, Carrie Beck here with Homeschool Coffee Break, where we help you stop the overwhelm so you can stop and take a coffee break. That's what you need. Um, today, well, I'm super excited because we're going to talk about a topic that I think a lot of moms are fearful of, and that is high school and homeschooling. And they're like, I might be able to do the first, second, third grade. I don't know about that junior, senior thing. So Thank you, Lisa, so much for being here. This is Lisa from True North Academy. I really appreciate you carving out some time to help our moms today. I am thrilled to be here. Thank you so much, Carrie. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So she runs True North Academy. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, before we dive into this topic of homeschooling high school, and it really isn't as hard as a lot of y'all make it out to be, um, can you tell everyone just a little bit about yourself? I'd love to. So I like to tell everybody I have one husband, two graduate degrees, five kids and a black belt in homeschooling. So <laughs> I've been married for 38 years to my husband, who's a clinical psychologist. Um, I have master's degrees in human development and marriage and family therapy. I have five kids who are now between the ages of 21 and 38, and they're all three and a half to five years apart. And then we homeschooled for 30 years. So um, it was a great, great way to raise our family and um, so much fun and joy and, you know, challenges and hardships because that is life, right? But um, really a fun, fun way to raise our kids. And then we, um, I started True North Homeschool Academy in 2018. I've spoken and done all the blogging and reviewing, reviewing products and stuff over the years. So it was just a natural extension of our own life and that work that I already done. That is so cool. And did y'all hear that? 30 years of homeschooling. We're talking the proof is in the pudding. Her kids are out. And she is, does not have first graders in telling you how to homeschool high school. She has lived through it with all her children. So I'm excited to hear from your experience. I know this is going to be really beneficial to our moms, but I would like to sort of start with this. Why do you think moms are so afraid of the high school years? You know, we get this question all the time, and I really think the fear comes from a couple places. All of a sudden, we feel this time pressure, like we have four years left. Oh, my gosh. And are our kids going to be successful or have we failed them? And so as parents, you know, our kids are our greatest joy and our greatest challenge in life. So we feel like if we didn't prepare them well and their failures, that reflects on us. But we didn't set them up for success well. And then also how do we set our kids up for success? Well, um, one of the things I've been talking to families about a lot um, is that it's not enough to prepare our kids for today. It's not enough to be up to today. We have to be up to tomorrow. And many of us are preparing our kids for how we graduated from high school and you know launched uh, from college. We launched as young adults, but that was at least 20 years ago. If you had kids in your 20s, 30s, and 40s like I did, for my younger kids, that's 40 years ago, that's like two generations ago. It's not the same world. We're in the fourth industrial revolution. We're in a time of great disruption. Everybody felt that from 2020, but we are in a, a time of great societal disruption globally. And so if we're preparing our kids for how we launched 20 years ago, it's, it's not up to date. That begs the question, how do we get up to date? <laughs> how do we prepare our kids for this really technological world that we live in? Um, Elon Musk and China just revealed that they have Neuralink um, now, which is they're going to help quadriplegics by putting um, uh, AI uh, technology into the base of brains to help people walk who didn't have that ability before. So we're in a really high tech world right now, kind of a smash up of sci-fi and medieval thought, <laughs> honestly. Um, and so I think parents are, they, they see things are changing. They don't really know how to define it necessarily. Um, so what you're feeling, this disruption, it's called literally the fourth industrial revolution. Um, but also how do we prepare our kids for this time? And how do we keep them firmly grounded in, you know, goodness, truth, beauty, all those kind of things, morality? How do we, um, how do we even define success? What does that look like? So um, I think that's why parents just, there's so much on our plates as parents. Most of us are working now as we homeschool more than any other time during the homeschool movement. And um, if you have a larger family or you're working, owning your own business, all those things, there's just so much to consider and juggle. It's just a complex world we live in, truly, truly. Um, 
I think I, I'd like to recommend two tools I think are super helpful for homeschool families. One is called um, a student learning profile. And what this is, is just sitting down and deciding what does success look like? Um, really writing it down, getting clear in, in your head, um, having a picture for yourself and do this with your spouse, do this with your kids, especially if they're in high school. What skills and what do they, what knowledge, content knowledge do they want to have by the time they graduate? Do they want to, um, do they want to get through trig in high school? Do they want to be, have half their college done in high school? Do they want to know how to train dogs in high school? Do they want to become a, a, you know, a professional in a sport or as a public speaker? All those things are possible to do in high school. We feel like we have all this time pressure because we have to get all the credits in, but homeschool moms and dads, you can credit that type of activity. So you don't have to do all of that plus you can do all of that and it counts. And I think that's one of the paradigm shifts we have to make as we homeschool that our life, the living that we do with our kids, we can credit that. Um, in my experience of doing academic advising over a decade with homeschoolers around the world, most homeschoolers literally undercredit their kids. Every parent I've talked to is like, my kid doesn't have enough to graduate. I ask them some questions. Guess what? Their kid's a licensed pilot or traveled across the United States in an RV with you for a year or any number of crazy things. They, they can cook a four course dinner. All those amazing things homeschool parents are doing, those can count for credit. So um, anyway, so create a student learning profile. Do that with your spouse. Do that with your kids. What do they want to know by the end of graduation? What's important for you to have them know? Can they balance their own bank account? Do they know what do they know what compound interest on a student loan really is? Can they purchase a car? Can they train a dog? Can they cook for themselves? Can they shop? All those kind of things, as well as academics, and just write it all down. We have a printout that actually I'll share the link with you, Carrie, so you can share with people. But I like to divide it into quadrants. Um, academic, emotional, social, and spiritual, because your kid is not just an intellect. Your kid is this whole person. So think about that whole person as you think about educating them. That's really, truly what education is about, is taking care of the whole person. So can your kid be healthy? Can they recover from an illness? Those kind of things, honestly, bake them into your curriculum. So that's the first thing, a student learning profile. And then the second tool is called a personalized learning plan. And a personalized learning plan is just what are you going to learn? Uh, what is your kids going to learn by year and by grade? So it's almost like a transcript, but it's blank. So across the top, and we have we have these links I'll share with you too. Um, we just put 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade. And along the left-hand side, we put English, history, math, science, foreign language, Bible, all the just all the basic stuff you'd have on a transcript. And then just fill it in. Um, and you can use it as a complete map that you just follow point by point, or you can use it as a guide. And then when something amazing comes up in your life, like you get to sail, you know, around the world or some crazy thing, I don't know, we've worked with, with parents who've done that kind of stuff. You can just go, okay, I'm going to take this part, but not that part. But having those kind of maps and those kind of things in mind can really help you uh, for one, it can really help take the pressure off of everything high school seems like it has to be, and it can help you really dream big. And that's one of the things I want homeschool parents to realize. You have all the freedom. You can make an amazing, creative, crazy, amazing adventure with your kids as you homeschool. That's one of the beautiful things about homeschooling is it doesn't just have to be like this checkbox, like we're going to cry every day in math, just get used to it. It doesn't have to be like that. You know what I mean? So I think those two tools are really helpful because they take the worries out of your head and, and then you have a map in front of you and you can use it as something that you just want to follow piece by piece or, you know, amend and, and tweak as you go. That's so good. And not even just taking all the stress and worry out, but also gaining some confidence because you actually talk to your student. Oh, there's three things that you said, gaining the confidence plus the student learning profile, I mean, 
what does success look like? And as a high schooler, taking ownership of it. And it's not just mom telling. I mean, I am always telling moms, your kids need to take ownership and leadership in their education in high school. We don't need to be telling them every, okay, today you do this. They should be starting to make some major decisions in your house, in your homeschool before they go launching, or they're not going to have a clue what they're doing when they yeah. leave. So I really appreciate right. that. Well, and I think we need to, we need to listen to our kids. And in all the years I've worked with kids, they're, kids aren't, they don't have space to talk a lot about their own ideas. They get talked to, or they scroll a lot. It's a very passive kind of interaction. And parents, I think if we make places for our kids to talk and we listen and take them seriously, for one, that shows how valuable we consider their ideas, but also you'll be surprised at what your kids say. Um, one of the things my daughter wanted to do, um, she, I, I actually taught career exploration years ago at True North and she took that class. And at the end of that class, she got some feedback from her skill set, and it said, you'd be a great mortician, which she was like, oh, that's weird, or a translator. And she took that to heart and she decided she wanted to really focus on translation during high school. So she graduated from high school fluent in Hebrew, which is a critical language, conversant in Spanish, which is, you know, if you know English, Spanish, and Chinese, you can talk with, you know, most of the world. And then um, she can hold her own in German. Um, she also did a deep dive into philology, how people study language and memory, uh, how your brain memorizes. So some brain, um, just like, like studies on brain and how your brain works and stuff like that. She didn't have a very typical course of study. Like she only took chemistry for sciences, but uh, she got great scholarships and she went to college and got A's and uh, made the honor roll and everything else. So I think if we just listen to our kids and take them seriously and equip them based on our lives, you don't have to equip them based on my life. Like she was able to take eight foreign languages with live teachers because partly because I own True North Home School Academy. If I hadn't, could I have afforded that? Maybe not. You know what I mean? But whatever you have in your hand is the equipping God gave you for your kids. And that's not a mistake. So if you have a kid who's, who comes and says, I want to become scuba, uh, it's called Patty, scuba certified, but you live in South Dakota like I do, you have to look around a while, but you can do it. You can get scuba certified in South Dakota and pretty much anywhere else if you can do it here. So just your kids are going to have wild dreams. They might not even know what scuba certified means, but they saw a documentary put some time and intention to that and see where that path takes you. Now, I, I tell parents all the time, I did crazy things in high school. High school classes to me were just in the way of my life. Like I did it and I was a great student, all those kind of things, but I threw pottery and sold it. And I was on the swim team and I did every kind of music I could get my hands on. It was in choirs and bands. And um, I, I, I jogged and I played tennis and I made the Ohio women's squash team and then broke my leg. But I did all those things and I loved them. I don't do any of those anymore. Right. Um, but it doesn't matter because I learned lessons that have stuck with me over the decades. And that's what we as parents have to realize, like high school is time to teach your kid to be an autodidact self learner, just like you were saying, Carrie, we have to give them um, and we have to equip them to 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 have a big vision and go for it and fail a little bit and regroup and recalibrate and all those things um, and really pour some time and intention into that. And then not expect it to be necessarily a job or something that they do for the rest of their life, but trust that those skills and tools and soft skills that they're learning during those things will stay with them over time. Any kind of music, you're going to learn so much things, so many things about discipline, communication. Um, it, it's one of the universal languages. So, you know, if you just sing a simple tune in a foreign country, chances are somebody else might know it too, you know? So there's so many great lessons we can learn in high school without making it like, okay, this is what they're going to do forever. Um, just don't take it so seriously, I guess, but also take it seriously. I don't know. I mean, I hope that makes sense, but yeah, just let your kids participate in it. I love that too. You said something at the very beginning that your daughter took one science chemistry. And I just want to say thank you for sharing that. I tell the story that my oldest daughter didn't finish algebra two and people are like shocked. I'm like, she still got into college. She got a degree in a year and a half, two years. 
and went on to get a teaching certificate because she changed her mind in college and decided she wanted to teach school. And so that is so much freedom. And yeah. if your kids are not like my girls were not math, but the second one wanted to go to Texas A&M and she knew which math it required. So she just put up with the math and did it knowing that she probably would never, well, I mean, she, obviously you need math in life, but obviously yeah. you know, she didn't need trigonometry yeah. to do her job yeah. now, but um, use the freedom and let your kids make some choices and don't just stuck everything in their brain or down their throat to yeah. take. So thank you so much for sharing that. Mm-hmm. I really do appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my daughters um, never made it past algebra one. She has dyscalculia, which we did not realize um, for years because she's doubly gifted. So just literally like so smart and gifted and ahead in one area. And then she still can't read a clock. Um, That's just part of dyscalculia. I think it's dyscalculia, Um, but she got a full ride for for your scholarship. So I'm not saying that everybody's going to do that. There's all sorts of scholarships besides academic and also God provides you know, I mean, that's the thing. God is still at work and alive and showing up in our lives and in the lives of our kids. And so just understanding who they are and letting them express their individuality. That's, I want to recommend a book. It's called The End of Average by Todd Rose. And he really talks about how our society and culture is really based on averages, um, test score averages. If you go to buy clothes, like for women, they're based on a five foot six um, inch woman who weighs 130 pounds. I've been five, nine since fifth grade. Listen, I wore floods throughout high school. Okay. So, but our whole culture is based on averages, clothing sizes, um, car seats, the whole bit, but statistically average almost doesn't ever exist. And we need to think about that as parents. Like we want to think about our kids as average people. They're not, they're unique. They're created in the image of a living God. And we need to just really see and listen and hear who they are what God's going to do in their life and feed into it. Um, It says, raise up a child in the way they should go. And the wording on that is very specific. It's about that person. What are their particular bents? You know, just pour into their bents. And I'm not saying um, we're a really academic family. Our kids have to do certain things. My husband's got three graduate degrees and I have two. So we're, we're all about academia, right? Like we're not, we're not, like saying, do whatever you want. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, you know, your kids need numeric literacy and they need um, language literacy. And after that, what are they called to do? How are you going to get them there? Um, How are you going to feed into it? How are you going to shore up the areas of weaknesses? Because a lot of times our greatest strengths are our greatest weaknesses. And if you see particularly your kids have this area of interest or whatever, it can also be something you need to shore up stuff for them with like your daughter was like, I want to go here. So I need this math. I'm going to put up with it. And we need to think about that for our kids too. So. Yeah, that's so good. And we do, I mean, and to be flexible and that every child is different. I love, I've got to go read this book because I'm like, you know, when you compare yourself to the public school, they're just teaching to the average or what they say is average, normal, like learn to read. They say the average age is eight plus or minus four years. So that's like four to 12, you know, and let's (laughs) give our, you're homeschooling, take the freedom. But it is scary because we have to untrain ourselves and hop off that conveyor belt, think outside the box. I'm loving this. You've given so many great ideas about homeschooling high school. Um, And yet I want to talk a little bit about True North Academy. And you say True North sorry, True North Homeschool Academy is centered around the compass. Yeah. And when I read a little bit about that, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Can you tell a little bit about um, what you mean by this and how parents could actually use that in their own homeschool? Yeah. So True North is a fixed point on the globe. Magnetic North um, it's the direction the needle points and, and the magnetic north changes a little bit. So there's fluctuation. True north is always the same. And so um, on, a, on a compass, if you're traveling like by ship, if you're a few degrees off, you can be hundreds of miles past where you needed to stop, right? But true north always takes you to where you're going. And um, it was just a prayer that I always prayed for my kids um, that they would never turn to the right or the left, that they would go true north all their days. And it's something I still pray for my adult children because I feel like our kids have so much coming at them. There's just um, be who you believe yourself to be, which 
you know, there's, there's good and bad with that, but there's just a lot of voices that want to tell them that they don't have to consider others, that they're good enough. And, um, and really the reality is if we're going to be really integrated, mature people, we must consider others. We must, um, we must navigate our own selfish tendencies and those problems that we all have characterologically, because we all have problems, right? Uh, like we're all human. And so true North is taking yourself with a grain of salt, who God made you to be in all of that beauty and mess that you are and making sure you're pointed in the right direction. And that means being in relationship with people because we don't live in a vacuum. It means serving and allowing others to serve us, all those kind of things. But True North Homeschool Academy is built on that idea that solid academic pedagogy is good academic pedagogy, no matter what you call it, Charlotte Mason classical textbook. I mean, you can use a lot of unschooling. I call myself an, an, a classical unschooler for years and nobody knew what I meant. And I'm like, okay, read these 30 books because <laughs> it explains it all. But good academic pedagogy is just good academic pedagogy. And it always leads people to truth. Um, it's like the scientific method. Science always leads people to truth and good academics always do too. And so True North never changes, even though Magnetic North does. And so that's that's why we named True North, True North. Um, it's based on truth, beauty and goodness, and faith, family, and freedom. Those are those are the pillars of True North. That is so good. And I'm going to assume that um, within your classes, in your academy, that's sort of where there's always this overriding, um, I don't know, overriding ideas or philosophy or direction so that all the classes sort of point into truth, truth, beauty, and goodness, and faith, family, and what was the last one? And freedom. Yes. Freedom. Oh, I love that word too. So. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, we come from a Judeo-Christian point of view. So all of our staff are um, some flavor of Judeo. We have a couple Orthodox Jews that teach, and then we have many evangelicals. Yeah, from different doctrinal backgrounds, but we're all, we're people of the book and that's, that's our guiding principle is what does the scripture say? And we have great discussions. We have brilliant teachers from around the world, um, all over the United States and then Italy, Mexico, and Israel, and, um, just a phenomenal, talented, uh, teacher pool. I, I love them. I just got to spend two weeks on the road, meeting different groups of our teachers and they're just amazing people. They love their subject matter and they love the kids. And we also try to follow that. There's what's called the SAMR hierarchy of online learning. Um, everybody experienced some piece of this in 2020 when they went online. Um, mm -hmm. SAMR is an acronym. It stands for substitution, augmentation, modification, and reimagining. So when the public schools went online, they just substituted online for in-person, but that you couldn't do that, right? So it's just a mess. Um, you can modify things and make it a little bit better. Um, and, and a lot of people did try to do that, but we really try to camp in the modification. Like we use Google Docs and kids write papers together and then reimagining where we're actually using tech in new and innovative ways for school. So like our German class, they actually meet with a class in Germany who's learning English once a month and the kids dialogue and get to know each other. Um, our ASL class, they actually have a, a, a deaf teacher who's an interpreter come and she's a guest every single month for the ASL classes. It's a way to reimagine education. Um, and so uh, we also... Um, gamify our classes. So gamification is a little bit different than doing games, although games are super fun for learning too, right? If you do it, if you're having fun, you're going to learn more and faster. Gamification is using gaming elements like challenges or, um, uh, you know, levels and stuff like that. So like our biology final is an escape room and the we're always doing training and sharing great resources and ideas. So we've got some really cool things that set us apart as an online academy. And um, I, I just love what we're doing at True North. Our families, I got to meet a lot of families at, at some of the conferences this last couple of weeks and they are, they're the future, man. Just makes me so happy. You know, you read the news and you're like, we're going down the toilet, but you meet some of these, these new, young, bright, amazing people. And you're like, we are going to be okay because these kids, they're going true North and they're going to be leaders. And it's, it's a joy to work with them. 
That is so cool. Okay, so you said a few things. The first thing that made me think of when you were talking about going through the book and everything, the Bible, is I always tell them, put the lens of scripture on. I don't care whether it's life or character or math or literature or music. You've always got to look at everything through the lens of scripture. And then your SAMR thing, especially to modify and reimagine. Yeah. I mean, we as homeschoolers, you've got the freedom to modify. You do not have to, I mean, if you want a textbook, fine, but you don't have to have a textbook with a bunch of multiple choice questions. I would sort of encourage you not to do that Continue anyway, that. but that's my own <laughs> opinion. Um, and then to reimagine, I love this gamification thing, because I know with some of my um, business students, um, I try to do a quarterly challenge with them and nice. all of a sudden they are just interacting even more than they actually did. The escape room for biology, I was like, yeah, I've never really done an escape room myself, but my kids love them. They're yes. all in their thirties. Um, so thank you for just one inventing this and reimagining what education is. And that would be one thing you talked about student learning profile, personal learning plan, and I do think you all need to consider what is education um, because it is like you do want academics, but it's not just academics. You've really broadened, I think, everyone's idea of that. So tell us, okay, just give us a little quick, like, can you just name four or five of maybe the most unique classes that y'all offer at True North Academy? You've already mentioned sign language and yeah. the German class. I was like, yeah. oh, that sounds cool. Um, we have some great writing classes, Dystopian Lit and Comp and Who Done It, where the kids write short stories and novels. Yes. And Meredith. Then, Meredith is amazing. I love her so much. Um, we have some other marketable skills classes, like how to learn to write copies. So you can make money in high school doing copywriting and how to, our speech class turned into a podcast YouTube class because we really want these classes to be things kids can do now and earn money for. We have video editing so kids can do their own video editing, start their own YouTube channel. Our entrepreneurship class, we do a Shark Tank challenge every semester. Super cool. I know we're going to see some of our kids in in big stores because these kids are innovative and they're going to they're going to start businesses that blow our socks off. Um we do have seven foreign languages. So we have Latin, Spanish, China, uh, Latin, Spanish, um, German, French, ASL, Hebrew, and Russian is new to us this year. Um, and several of our kids take multiple languages a year. We've had like probably a half a dozen kids who've taken two or three classes in foreign language every year. And they're just amazing students. Um, we have we have the core of, of science um, and English and math and um and history we have a couple really unique history classes of course world history modern modern world history and then adam prusian teaches modern world history war and peace why why countries stay at peace or go to war and then he does an honors class called politics philosophy and econ it's a credit and a half and um it, it is it is a very um it's it's a, a very deep dive into politics, philosophy, and economics. Um, he is a benefactor at Hillsdale. He could teach at Harvard. And um, he's a brilliant educator. Both my younger kids said he changed their lives um, because he's very Socratic and dialectic. And his whole point is, if you can't think critically, you're in bad shape. So that's the point of his class. And it's it, he's just brilliant. So, but we have, I, I mean, I could just go on and on because- I know. We have such innovative teachers and they're so talented. Um, and and most of them, the majority of them homeschooled or were homeschooled. We have, I think, six former homeschoolers teaching for us. And um, and then we have people who started small classical schools and actually yeshivas. Um, so these are educators. These are alternative educators who really love alternative education and how can they make their classes project-based and, um, and unique and innovative and fun. That is so cool. And we'll have links to this and y'all can just look wherever you're um, listening or watching this in the show notes or the description. You did make a comment. And I mean, like the more I listen to you, I'm like, we are so like-minded because critical mm -hmm. thinking, y'all know me, I'm all about character and love of learning and critical thinking. Because if you don't, if your kids can't think and all they've done is follow you and be told what to do, they are going to fall on their face. So I love what he said, Socratic dialogue. There were just so many, I was like, yes, 
Yes, yes, this is awesome. So y'all need to go check out True North Homeschool Academy. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. as we get ready to close, is there anything that you would like to um, leave in closing comments? Yeah, I just want to, you know, parents, you are the rebels. If you're homeschooling, you are raising the rebel flag and just embrace it because we are in this world of averages, but you've decided to step away from average and really invest in your family. And I just have so much gratitude to you for um, Carrie, for leading the way for so many people who are looking to how to do that. And for families who are willing to step outside of the average and the normal to, to go on this narrower path. And it can be really scary because you might not know anybody who's done it, or you're not sure if you're going to fail your kid, but um, you can do it. You can do it and you can make a beautiful life for your family that is unique, that your kids always refer back to as game changing. So um, all the all the thanks to you parents who are who are doing this crazy wild thing called homeschooling. And I just want to encourage you because it is again, it's a fun way to raise your kids. It's a beautiful way to just connect as a family. And there's so many resources for you right now. Never been a better time to homeschool. <laughs> So true. You just said that so well and just encouraging our parents as well. So thank you so much for spending time with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Carrie. All right. And I'm Carrie Beck with Homeschool Coffee Break. We'll talk to you next time.